Welcome to Rod Mitchell Podcast. This month's topic is It's Not the End, Finding Hope. Around this time, it's the holiday season, and for some, it's a joyous time. For others, it can be one of the hardest times, um, especially when um, it may be a reminder of someone who's not here anymore. Robin Williams said it this way, I used to think the worst thing in life was to end up all alone. It's not. The worst thing in life is to end up with people that make you feel all alone. Today we have a new guest. Her name is Sarah M. If I say that correctly, thank yes, you so much yes. for here, coming on and sharing your insight. Did I say it correctly? Yes, that's correct. Sarah M. Okay. Thank you for joining us, Sarah. I'd like to share with all of the listeners and around the world that disclaimer if you're in the united states 988 is the national suicide prevention lifeline but if you're around the world i do encourage you to find what resources is available because resources are different for each individual uh, at least for me working in the mental health field i i know that is very much the truth um there's another well Sarah, I always say that people say it better than I do. So we're going to go with a quote. The first one was Robin Williams, but this is from a Horatio Jones. And he says this. It says, instead of saying I'm damaged, I'm broken, I have trust issues. I say I'm healing. I'm rediscovering myself. I'm starting over. What comes to mind when you hear this quote? Well, that I remember I'm... I'm saying that I'm re- I'm healing mm-hmm. many time many time uh, a few years back not a mm. few years a few de- decades back I'm always say I'm healing so I I love to read the book like a devotional book on healing mm-hmm. uh, it's very helpful to me so yeah it it helped to remember that we are healing we are not broken yeah, and I like the the idea of healing is it's a constant, it's a process, you know. And mm-hmm. uh, as we know, and as I rediscover, life keeps changing, whether you like it or not, you know. And uh, it's how we look at the change sometimes can be helpful. Sarah, you know, I always like that. I always appreciate these guests to come on my uh, podcast. I know it's not always easy to share some of the topics that we do talk about but since you're new to the listeners i want to give you a little bit of time to share a little bit of your story i know you wrote a book i know it's um i know it's that it's, there's been a lot that you went through but whatever you feel comfortable uh, the floor is yours to share and all the all the book and all that links will be in the notes for those listening so they can check out how to find more about more about you sarah so go ahead okay um Again, my name is Sarah M. I grew up in Cambodia. Hmm. As a child, I was happy and I feel very loved by my parents. But when I when I attend college, mm-hmm. I had to leave my family behind. And college is far away from home. While I was far away, the communist Khmer Rouge took over our country. Mm-hmm. They came in with madness, with resentment, with anger, and they came in to destroy us. Mm-hmm. I don't know what their original idea was, but but when they came to power, they mm-hmm. pretty much destroyed our country and destroyed our life. And I struggled for four long years in the forced labor camp. Mm-hmm. I... I live with very little food and work very hard, extremely hard, long hours. And I was exhausted and starved Mm. and seriously sick. I contracted several diseases. And when I was too sick to work, they sent me to an infirmary. Mm. And I was supposed to be in the infirmary waiting for the time to die mm. but but with my love for my family my my mind was thinking about them all the time mm. and that was the life saving for me I'm thinking about my family 
I want to survive so that I can go back home. How old were you during those four years? When what? When how old were you? If you don't mind me asking. I was in my early twenty. Hmm. So I can imagine, you know, those who are listening. Um, sometimes we forget, especially if you're in the states, that there's a other countries out there. There's other things that um, people go through each and every day. And uh, last month was building a home. The theme for November was building a home because it's different from a home and a house. And you're you're mentioning your family was a big component of what kind of held you together. Um, yeah. Was there anything else that that you remember, and if you're um, comfortable in sharing, that helped you through those hard four years? Through that hard four years, I remember that I had built friendship with the the, the people that was in the same camp. Mm. We we support each other. Mm. When when I got very sick and I become blind at night, there was a, mm. a, a condition, it's called a night blindness. When mm -hmm. when you are so lack of nutrition, you mm. lose your sight at night. So mm. without the help of my friend in the camp, I would have got lost, I would have wandered all over. But they helped me. And not only that, when um, at the end of four years, mm -hmm. I have a courage to to plan an escape. You know, uh, I can't imagine at that at in your twenties to you know, it couldn't be easy to make that decision. You you had, um, what what was the what was the moment when you said I need to get get out and what. What gave you the strength you feel to get through that? And I, so, you know, you mentioned you had people that supported you in there that were helping you, you know, with your, um, how many of you were there? If you don't mind me asking, I, I just find it's inspiring to hear even that the most dire moments in a person's life that they, they find the courage to do this, whatever you feel comfortable sharing. I, I got trapped in the camp that was uh, f was uh, for for single uh, f uh, single woman and man mm -hmm. all together in that camp was one thousand people to start with, mm. and by the end of four years there yeah. was prob we probably have about three hundred left. Wow, and the rest. They just die or was taken away, whatever reason. There, mm. some some people, they were just been taken away secretly. I I just, you know, it's just. It's, I know. It, I just know that. Um, we hear these stories, you know, especially when we think about. Um, World War II and like the people who struggled during the um, time of the Holocaust and all that and um, a lot of times it just we just to hear it from someone like yourself it is truly inspiring to hear you you know in light of all this you you have a story of hope now what is the name of your um, of your book for so those who are listening could kind of um, the name so, of my book, yes. How I Survived the Killing Field, The Story of Hope, Love, and Determination. This is this is how my book okay. looks like. That's the, yeah, and I, all the, the link to find out more about if you are interested in uh, um, getting it and reading it, I do encourage you to, but it's, it's inspiring, you know, your story, I'll tell you, Sarah, and I don't want to... Um, you know, I want people to feel encouraged to read your book and kind of and to hear the whole story. But it is inspiring to kind of throughout even the most dire, you were able to find hope, love and determination. Is there anything else that you want to share uh, briefly about that 
whole four years that kind of stood out to you that you want to share with those listening today? Yeah, the, um, at one point, the first couple months when I got really sick and they sent me to an infirmary, mm -hmm. and I realized that I need to get out of that infirmary. Mm. I know if I stay in that infirmary, I would not survive because mm. that's the place where very sick people stay. Yeah. And I already have a few conditions, a few disease in my body, and mm. I will end up getting more disease from other people if I keep staying in there. So I realized that I need to get out from there. But where? Where can I go? Mm. If I go back to the working place, I cannot do anything. I cannot work. My, my condition was too hard to work. And if I run away from the whole camp, I would not last. I, I don't have an energy to, to run away. Mm. So I remember when I was very young, my mm -hmm. mom read the bedtime story for herself. It's a, an adult story. Mm -hmm. But in that story, there was a, a situation where a mean person grabbed somebody else's children and wife mm -hmm. and he took them into his possession and mm -hmm. abused them mm -hmm. and it took god in heaven god mm -hmm. saw what happened mm -hmm. and he he sent the angel to rescue mm -hmm. the children and the woman mm -hmm. from this story i make a decision i said there is god mm -hmm. god knows what happening mm. and he's a good god that's mm. all i know that's all i know i mm. um i don't know anything else but i make up my mind that there is god mm -hmm. now in the infirmary when i need to save my life i need mm. to do something to survive mm -hmm. and i cannot help myself i remember that god mm. And I wait until night time and I pray. Mm -hmm. I ask, I ask God, God, please, please help me to survive. Please help me. Mm -hmm. I thank him every night. And then after a while, after many, many nights of praying, mm -hmm. one morning when I woke up very early than usual, mm -hmm. I, I felt like I have an extra energy. So maybe I'll try to walk <clears throat> out from the infirmary and go back to where the working people are staying. As mm -hmm. I transition from the infirmary to the working place, I, when I got there, one kind team leader saw me mm -hmm. and she took me in her group and she said, you can stay with me and let me try to find something that you can do mm. in this camp you cannot do nothing you have to mm. be able to do something mm -hmm. so when she realized that i'm too sick to do anything mm -hmm. she went to talk to the people at the kitchen mm -hmm. and then she came back to tell me that you can go to work in the kitchen they can use mm. your help so mm. it's just like hallelujah mm. god answer my prayer in the most amazing way mm. only god know where i need to be you know it's 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 inspiring just just even throughout that you're you're in the infirmary you know they're rationally if you think about it you shouldn't be comfortable but you found comfort in a higher power god you know and even though revive ministry doesn't proselyze outreach it is i always encourage these inspiring stories i myself am faith-based but i just inspire it's inspiring to see um because there's things that are unanswered you know we don't know why we feel confident or why we feel we have the strength but uh, Mark Twain says it this way, and it's a contrast. The worst loneliness is not being comfortable with yourself. 
And I feel when you were telling that portion, you were comfortable in the most uncomfortable situation. And you found the strength to walk. And, I, you know, it's inspiring, especially you know, I don't minimize any. Um, and I, at least in my line of work, I, I see the devastation of what loneliness can do for, pe for people making decisions and um, actually outsourcing their choices. So I would say it's inspiring when you found comfort where most people would say that is not comfortable. So thank you, Sarah, for sharing that with us. Um, thank you. I want to yeah. ask. Go ahead. Sorry. Yes, I um, I I found comfort among my friend that I built in that uncomfortable place. It's mm -hmm. very uncomfortable. It's very tragic, but mm -hmm. the friendship that make a difference. The yeah. support, the support that we can give to each other, that mm -hmm. can make a difference. I know I, I mentioned this a lot with um um uh what's it um Victor Frankl and his experience in his book um he says the people that he noticed that did well was the ones who actually felt I'm paraphrasing that felt that there was another day you know the mm -hmm. ones that were like you know oh you gotta walk like he saw the people who are hopeful that this was not it this is not it. We're the ones that did better on, uh, and, uh, there's something that's intangible about the, the idea of hope. And that's why I, I like to encapsulate and kind of in, in, in encourage those listening and also just, uh, emphasize by hearing your story, just a little bit of it. Um, thank you for sharing that. And just, you know, a lot of times people may kind of talk themselves into a corner say well i can't because you know this 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 um but you know even when most people would say sarah you don't have a choice you're in the infirmary you made a choice which uh, i just want to commend you on um ralph waldo emerson said our strength grows out of our weaknesses <laughs> and i feel sometimes that is very true when you look at your look outside of yourself instead of just thinking of your own so if I want to ask you, I know I kind of mentioned this, but what helped you move past these negative moments in your life and what did not? And we're talking about you're, you're out of the, you're after the four years, I'm sure it took you years, decades to get, you know, you talked about healing. What helped you um, get through it? You, you survived. Um, how did you make it to where you are today? Well, I decide long time ago when mm -hmm. when I have an opportunity to go back home and find found my family. Mm -hmm. My joy was overwhelming. I was mm. overwhelmed with joy, with gratitude, and I forgot all the pain that I went through, mm. and I let go. I let go of any resentment, of any anger. Mm. I just, I just enjoy my family mm -hmm. and look forward to rebuilding my life. And I took, it took me more than a year to recover my health. Mm. So that's immediately after, after the captivity. And mm -hmm. then when I have an opportunity to come to United States, I escaped out of Cambodia mm. to, to Thailand and found a refugee camp. And through the refugee camp, I made connection with my relative in United States and he mm. sponsored me to come here. And in United States, I had to rebuild my new life. Mm. I need to, to learn the new language. Mm -hmm. I need to find a job. I need mm -hmm. to um, continue with my education. So mm -hmm. it's a lot of hard work. Mm -hmm. But but I just appreciate the opportunity. Mm -hmm. Because when I look back into Cam to Cambodia, if you did not pass the high school, that's the end. Mm -hmm. But here in United States, you can keep going to school all mm -hmm. your life until... Mm -hmm. 
whatever whenever you want to go mm. so i look at that opportunity i i found it very amazing mm. so i grab the opportunity and keep moving forward you know it's um you mentioned letting go but it's also it's it's even harder to start over you know um yes. it's one thing to let go it's it's harder to start over and i do like listen to your story also it's not that you want to i think one thing that's different is that you don't want to stay in that um negative emotion but you don't want to forget in a way that no. make, make you not appreciate what you have today if that makes sense yeah um and i you know the one thing is uh the reframing of how you see things you could be like oh i'm in this new country i don't know the language i know this because my mom's south korean <laughs> I'm half South Korean, half Puerto Rican. So I know with my mom, it was a struggle for her to learn the language coming here. And, um, but at the same time, you mentioned even just family, you know, it starts from the home, you know, remembering um, how important they are, you know, and also just, you know, we're human, you know, and we're going to respond. And I do feel, even though we haven't talked about much, you allowed yourself grace to heal as you needed to. And mm -hmm. I think that's why even when you tell the story, even though it's very sad and it's maybe very different for those who are listening, it is also very, it, there's calmness in how you share it. Does that make sense? It's not of, you know, you, you, you remember it. Yeah. You remember it was hard. You remember all the things that could have went wrong. But you share it in a way that's calm, and I would say hopeful. So, thank you again. Um, as we, um, there's this word. My wife has this untranslatable word. This, this is in Greek. It says "meraki." I guess that's how you say it. Um, uh, if any person from Greece is upset because I said it wrong, I apologize <laughs> in advance. Uh, but it's pouring yourself wholeheartedly into something and doing so with soul, creativity, and love. The idea is. You know, um, you know, a lot of times, um, I think Martin Luther King said it this way, if you're a sweeper, be the best sweeper you can be. Like, don't, like, don't really concern yourself of um, others in this regard. And I feel that the, your attitude, and especially coming to a new country, is not easy. Now, I've had other guests kind of share that, but you look at it as positive, and I just want to say, that is um, that is good to hear. Um, anything else you want to share? I'm going to kind of lead into, uh, like I said, those who are listening, the links to her books and everything else you can find out will be in the notes. Sarah, it's always a joy to have new guests and sharing their insight. Any final thoughts you want to share? Anything that we haven't mentioned? Please, the floor is yours. Well, um, I feel like my experience gave me strength. Mm. I don't see it as my weakness. As mm. I don't see it as uh, harmful to my life. So mm. I use this as my victory. Mm. I won over this battle and this, this very hard battle in my life. Mm -hmm. I won it over. Yeah. So, so when I look at that way, it give me strength, give me confidence and mm -hmm. energy to help other people mm -hmm. so that they can do the same. They can overcome their own adversity. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, you saying that reminds me why I used to say a lot. And the first time, first year doing the podcast was um, helping because helping others became my healing. You know, yeah. you know, uh, uh, serve, you know, serving others became a recovery. You know, it was it could never just be for me at least. It could never be just held to myself. You know, I remember you sharing, seeing your family, reconnecting with your family in Cambodia was one of the joyous moments. But one thing, I also was thinking, some people will just keep that to yourself, and I'm not faulting them, but. There's something about you when I'm talking to you that is that you want to share this to the others, that there is hope out there. 
that there is not, you know, some days may not go totally your way. And clearly, you know, as the contrast of you sharing a bit of your four years in the work camp, you know, some people would not be able to relate. But I would say even when you feel the odds are against you, you still have a choice. And I feel that is inspiring at the very least. Thank you again, Sarah, for sharing. Um, I just want to say um, anything you want to say lastly to the listeners? Well, um, one last thing I would like to say is this. Look for something that you can be grateful for, no matter what situation. Uh, I, I totally second that a lot of times we forget how many things um we are um that has happened in our lives that we could be grateful for it's easy for us to kind of be bitter but i totally agree thank you sarah i want to also share with those who are listening all the updates you can go to various platforms for revive ministry revive ministry fl.com is our website this is goodbye from Rod Mitchell, leaving with his last quote from Anne Frank. She says, I don't think of all the misery, but of all the beauty that remains. Mm.